Good day, everybody. This is Dark Comet, and welcome to my channel. Hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to Little Nightmares Part 2. This is going to be the fifth and final chapter of this really eerie and spooky and incredible game. I've really had lots of fun playing it for you guys, and I hope you've enjoyed watching it as well. There is no formal name to this chapter. However, I'm going to call it the Signal Tower because all the concept art and stuff that came with the Deluxe Edition, including things that are on the developer's website, they all point that you're trying to eventually save six from the signal tower and of course that's where we are right now so that's what I'm going to call it the signal tower hope you guys enjoy it as well in last episode we saw Mono escape hordes of faceless mindless people that were watching television sets and being controlled by the thin man we also saw Mono try to rescue his companion um, that was taken captive by the thin man and pull him out of the TV but then that actually was the worst thing they could do because they pulled him back and we had to see how Mono dealt with that. We also saw the Thin Man come out of the TV and Mono had to then run for his life and escape in through the train which was quite entertaining and fun. We saw Mono then come up into the street level after he was injured and encounter the Thin Man in a big old standoff and that's when we saw that Mono actually has powers and was able to control the transmission powers that the Thin Man also had and he was able to match the movements and destroy the Thin Man with his own powers. I was quite surprised there. In this episode we're going to see Mono finally enter the pink purple pale light of the doorway that we saw at the end of last episode. We're going to go down a long corridor and finally enter the signal tower. We're going to find out that there's a series of puzzles that have to be solved in order to reach six at the very top of the tower. There's a series of doorways and stairwells that have to be encountered and we have to find our way up. And that's quite entertaining and fun to try to figure out. We're going to also see that Six is quite different than what we envisioned from the little child that was in the raincoat. We're going to also see that she's part of a curse that has to be broken. And after we break that curse, we're going to encounter a new monster that's going to try to keep us within the Signal Tower's walls. As we try to escape the Signal Tower, we're going to also see the final ending of this game. There's actually two endings that I'm going to share with you. The first one is ends in quite the shocking surprise as we saw at the end of the first Little Nightmare game as well. We're going to also see a surprise ending that's a secret ending that only is available if you have received all the glittering remains from this game which we also did. We're going to also share with you the concept art which is quite fun to see how the developers came up with the concepts and what they included and did not include in this game and I'm going to also share with you the credits and this eerie spooky music that was part of the game which was quite fun to listen to. You can uh, fast forward through that part if you want to or not, it's up to you and let's go ahead and start this tale here. As we'll see in the fifth chapter there is no collectibles to obtain, there's no um, special hidden trophies, it's all a part of the progression trophies that you'll receive for finishing the game itself. We're going to get the final hat that's related to the ones that we have not gotten so far, it's the last hat we haven't gotten. We're going to get that for finishing the game and then we actually have to start a new game plus in order to put the hat on and we're going to see ourselves get the final couple of trophies in the new game plus that will give us that platinum status. So. Let's go ahead and start this eerie and spooky tale and try to figure out this challenge of trying to find our way to the top of the tower. What I do suggest for you when you're playing this chapter is that you turn your volume way up because the key to going through this doorway is actually here on this first open one to the right. And I'll wait for that here to let you hear what happens. So as this door here opens, you're going to hear some very trilly loud music and so the key to getting your way up through the tower is actually to find the doorway that has the loudest music and of course you can't do that if the volume is set to low so good luck with that and we'll get to the top of the tower and see how the tale plays out and what happened to six and what happens at the end of this game it's so exciting guys can't wait to share it with you Thank you. 
Well, guys, if you were not surprised by that, I don't know what would surprise you anymore. That was quite the crazy ending where Six either let him go on purpose or she accidentally let him go. Either way, her evil may have shown through and she killed the, the little companion that has been with her all along. Poor Mono. Um, we're going to also see here as we enter this area that Mono didn't quite die. And when I watched what happened with Six and Mono, and I saw what happened at the end of the previous chapter in Chapter 4, and I saw the curse as it played out with Six, it really made me rethink what this game means to me and how the story played out. I think I've been completely wrong playing this game up to this point. I kind of didn't want to get into it until now, but this is what my theory is. As we see Mono walk with inside the belly of the multi-eyed blob beast and make his way up to this chair here, we're going to see another surprise. We're going to see that Mono isn't quite who we thought he was. At the end of seeing that, I will share my thoughts on what this game means to me. This game um, really made me rethink what my theories were. It made me think of what I've been saying to you guys all along. I did just change the description of all the chapters before me, but of course I didn't change any voiceover of what happened because I went with the concept that I thought I believed. Uh, other people also had the same concept as I did when I was playing this game, so that was quite interesting. So let's see what happens to Mono here as we are being enveloped by the blob and it's closing in on us. So it looks like we have Mono here in this chair and he's stuck in a empty room. Looks like there's just a pale purple light shining down on him and he's stuck in an endless time loop so let's see what happens. Did that surprise you guys? Mono, after he grew up in this endless loop of time inside the belly of the beast, has just become the Thin Man, or he replaced him. I don't know which one is the truth, but I'm going to go with that he actually was the Thin Man, and that we're stuck in an endless time loop here. So that's quite interesting, and that's why my theories changed when I saw what happened with Six, and I saw this, it really made me rethink, what does this tale really mean? So. When this plays out, we're going to, of course, get the ending of the game. And if you got all the glitching remains, you're going to also get another special ending, which I'll show to you here. It's going to be a secret ending. You'll also get two trophies for finishing the game. One is called the signal interruption, which means that you finish the game here in this chapter. You're going to also get the far ahead which means that you finally collected the last hat which actually is the hat that's on the thin man's head and we'll put that on later as I described in the beginning of this tale and of course you're gonna see it pan out here and you're going to kind of wonder what just happened guys that was awesome the developers really put together quite the tale I'm glad they left it up for our interpretation as well they didn't reveal too many secrets and it's like I said it's all up to us and right now we're gonna get that secret ending of the game that you wouldn't have got if you didn't get all the glitch remains. We'll see how that plays out and then we'll look at the concept art and during that time I'm going to share my theories of what this game means to me as well. So hope you guys stay tuned for that and let's get busy.
That was freaking awesome, guys. And I'll explain why in a little bit. But first, we're going to take a look at all the chapters and see that I have collected all the hats and all the glitching remains so that you guys can get that platinum status. We also got all the hidden trophies and all the progression trophies. Uh, and there's only two more remaining, which we'll pick up here in a second. I'll show you how to get that. So go hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. And what we're going to do now is start New Game Plus. We're going to open up Chapter 2 of this tale because there's no intro video and that'll jump us right into the game itself we're going to then open up the wheel and open up the hat log there and we're going to try on the new thin man hat that we picked up for finishing the game let's go ahead and do that right now once you put on this hat that's going to give you the last trophy here There we go, we got that trophy. It's called How Do I Look? You'll see that we got all the trophies in the game here, which now give us the Platinum Trophy, which is called Primetime Content Consumer. So, of all the hats you get, there are actually two optional hats that I described earlier. Um, one is the one for getting the Gnome DLC, and one is for pre-ordering the game, which was the little hat with the twig on it. But that should give you all the trophies, all the collectibles, and now you have platinum status. So now we're going to take a look at the concept art, guys. I hope you guys stick with me because I'm going to also share my theories on what this game meant to me. The developers left us a note here. Ever since the release of the first game, we've had many questions about how we came up with the look of Little Nightmares. The simple answer is iteration, a long and painful process where we work to find the personality of this world and everything in it. Getting this right is essential not only for the players, but also to inspire us as developers and to keep our minds focused. Within this book is a selection of concept work from Little Nightmares 2. Not all of it shows up in the final game, but it all helped us get there. We hope you enjoyed it. And as we watch this incredible concept art to see what was in the game and what quite didn't make it, I would like to share with you my thoughts on the theories of this game and why I changed my mind after some hindsight, of course, and seeing how the game played out. I wanted to do that before I made up my own theories and what the game meant to me. I'd be interested to hear what you guys thought of the game, too. Did you guys enjoy it? I thought it was really awesome. I did think it was a little too short for the money, but I had a lot of fun anyway. Um, I'd also like to hear what your theories are and if you believe that my theories might be correct on how you're thinking as well. So, I think that this game is actually a prequel to the first game, and I'll share with you why I think that happened. So, we see the little child be rescued by Mono in the first chapter. At the hunter stage, we saw that the child was clutching a music box, and at that time it didn't dawn on me what that really truly meant. I always thought that Mono rescued a little boy, and that when the little boy found the raincoat that it was actually an Easter egg for the first game, as long as you also saw that when Mono broke the Geisha doll, that is also another easter egg for the first game as well, so that's what I thought. But now my concept is completely changed. I think that the little child at the very beginning was not a little boy, as I believed all along, was actually Six herself. So when Mono dies here, almost dies I should say, um, in the belly of the beast, and was thrown off the bridge by Six at the end there, we see that he's so consumed by anger that as he's stuck in this timeless loop inside the belly of the beast as he grows up there he becomes the thin man and when he becomes a thin man he gets some kind of power in order to escape the belly of the beast and that's why we see all these eyes everywhere in the game, first two games uh, we see this evil eye which is actually the blob in my opinion we also see that he's so consumed by anger that as he gained his powers he controls transmission lines controlling the world in order to get revenge on six um, Six has some pretty incredible powers later on in life, so it's really hard to take down. But So he probably went back in time as a little kid and was able to teleport himself back in time and capture Six when Six didn't have her powers at the end of the first game. So what we saw now is that Mono is clutching a music box. We see that Mono is very obsessed with this music box later on, and that's why that kind of concept changed for me. We also see that the little boy Mono... Um, was also trying to put 
six in a prison cell um, and eventually unfortunately as the time loop happens it can't stop itself so that kind of is interesting theory to me that this is a prequel that is stuck in a virtual time loop that the little boy mono is actually trying to stop six from killing himself at the end there and that as a kid grows up it then gets uh, its anger back tries to then capture six put her into a prison cell inside the tickle tower and of course it's just a, it just never is never ending story I think that was really clever on the developers part and the story writers and I <laughs> really was surprised at how this tale played out and hope you guys enjoyed it as well it is so spooky and eerie and the way that this played out also has to do with a lot of the pictures you'll see in the first game if you don't permit the first game I suggest that you guys watch the first game and you can see that in the playlist down below in the description and uh, the theories are that see you'll see the little boy here grow into the thin man and get the powers there that's why he was able to combat himself because he already knew how to use those powers there was also a lot of clues in the first game with the pictures on the wall the different bosses we encountered and how that story played out which also made me think about this in this time loop even more as I was dwelling on it last night and this morning after I finished the game the part where we see six encounter the lady the Japanese geisha lady um, she's either her mother or she actually becomes the lady at the end of the first game that is still up in debate for many people as they had the theories of the first game so it's kind of like I said uh, the little mono becomes the transmission man which is the thin man and that maybe six actually becomes the lady we also saw that in the first game the ship that six was trapped within and the DLCs that also were trapped within that ship um, actually looks like a music box as well when you pan out so that's quite an interesting thing to look at as well so I hope you guys enjoyed the game um, I like I said I really enjoy to hear what you guys think about it and what your concepts are and what your theories are to you for this game and how it played out and if you believe that my theories might be something along the same lines I really do appreciate you guys joining me on this incredible tale. I, like I said, I do think it's a little bit too short for the money, but because I had a lot of enjoyment out of it and was really surprised by how the story played out, it actually made it worthwhile for me. I think that the DLC for the gnomes actually wasn't quite worth it, although I think the concept art and the digital soundtrack that comes with it is kind of nice, but I don't know if it's all worth the 10 extra dollars. So if you're buying the game for the first time, I suggest maybe you buy the standard edition. Of course, you won't get the concept art, the digital soundtrack, and that short sequence with the gnome there to get that special one of a kind hat. Of course, it's up to you guys on how you spend your money. That's just my suggestion. I had so much fun, guys, playing this game. It was so entertaining, so spooky and eerie. The art of the game, the way that the story played out, the fact that you had to kind of figure out the story yourself and what it might mean to you was also less up to the developers. I like that they didn't have a bunch of dialogue and give us a bunch of descriptions and that it made us think outside the box of what this story really means. That was quite fun and I really enjoyed that part as well. I really appreciate everybody who joined me on this incredible spooky and eerie adventure. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. It was so awesome that you guys watched this with me, and I look forward to sharing future adventures with you as well. I don't know what my next game is going to be. I've been debating that quite a bit lately in my mind. I know that I only have so many months until I have to pack up all my computer and start moving, and so I don't know what that game is going to be. I am kind of pushing towards maybe Assassin's Creed Origins because I love that tale so much, and of course I can continue that later on when I get everything back online. So. Make sure you guys hit that like button. It really helps out my channel a lot. It also shows me that you appreciate everything that I put together for you, all the research I had to do. Um, it, there's a lot of this game that involved me running around a lot, trying to find all the hidden doorways and subterranean levels and little passages and boxes you had to move. Um, also trying to solve different puzzles throughout the game in order to find those secret hidden trophies. That was quite challenging, and I hope you guys appreciate how much work I put into that for you guys as well. Make sure you hit that notification bell, guys, so you'll be notified when I do my next Dark Comet adventure, whether it's gameplay or anything else I might add to the channel. I have been debating on what this channel might mean to me. I know that I love playing games for you guys, but I might add some things, like maybe you might like seeing some of my artwork as I develop that, whether it's painting or whether it's mixed media art or anything like that. Maybe you guys would enjoy seeing that, and or maybe cooking and some of the recipes I like to do. Um, I do like to cook and try to experiment with things, so maybe you guys would like to see that. Just let me know in the comments down below if that's something you might be interested in seeing in the future. 
you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so now. I really would love having you join my channel as we're trying to grow it. And for those current subscribers, I really want to let you know how much I appreciate you guys and that I've been having so much fun trying to grow this channel and play these games for you. Make sure you stay safe and healthy out there, guys. We live in a crazy world right now from the weather and from the virus. And I really want to make sure that you guys take care of yourselves, stay healthy, and I look forward to seeing you guys on my next Dark Comet adventure. And like I said, I will might be gone for a little bit here in the future, um, especially towards summertime as I try to move locations. So I might be out of the loop for a little bit, but uh, hopefully we'll get, be able to get another game in here before I move. If not, um, that's okay too. So stay healthy, stay safe, and we will see you guys later.